Welcome to Talent X, the Talent Experience podcast featuring authentic conversations on the future of work, empowering you to better understand and deliver a best in class, future proofed career experience. For more insightful conversations, visit talentxpodcast.com. We hope you enjoy this episode of the Talent X podcast. Welcome to Talent X. This is the podcast that t- talks about the talent experience. And today we have Tim Sackett. Tim is a well-known influencer in the space. He last year, in fact, was identified as one of the top 10 global influencers by Work F- Workforce Magazine. Tim is globally re- well recognized in the space. I think you, I saw Tim that you were actually ranked number eight by Analytica. So, um, hey, there Tim, you go. welcome. I, I must be famous. I mean, I'm on the Twitters and all the, you know, all the social platforms and getting, I'm getting, and I get my name on lists. So, you know, hey, there, it's something. Well, it's, it says, it's, it's telling the world that in the HR space that you're an authority on something. <laughs> For uns- Something is the key. (laughs) So, Tim, um, we're in the world right now of transition. And talent has just gone into a downward spin. But there is a light at the tunnel um, in many ways. And and what are you seeing out there? Um, You know, I think right now, I think a lot of indecision and kind of like froze in place, not sure what to do. You know, it's one of the issues I think we see across the talent spectrum is, you know, when you when you get into crisis management, whether you're in HR, talent acquisition, you know, the first, you know, we kind of have this Maslow thing that happens where, you know, you try to take care of yourself and your family or you take care of your employees and, and you're not really focused on higher strategic things. You're just focused on how do we make sure the, you know, everything is, you know, still working um, and can we do this from home? And if so, and so like over the last two or three weeks, we've seen just, you know, that's all people have been focused on is like, just how do we keep doing our business, but not do our business in the way that we've been doing our business. And so I think as we settle in, we're going to start to see a lot of individuals have some real conversations first about, Hey, do we, do, do we need everybody we have right now? And that, and again, with total, like a full heart and empathy and everything, like, cause I know literally millions and millions of companies are being impacted on this in a negative way. There's a, there's a few that are having some positive outcomes, but that's, that's dwarfed by the size of everything else that's happening on the negative side. And so as a talent acquisition leader, you really have to talk about, you know, the, the real aspect of, you know, do we have to reduce our teams? And if so, what does that look like? And I think it gives us all kind of this kind of clean slate to say, do we have the talent we need for what's going to happen next? Do we have the right talent to, you know, do we have the right skills? Um, Do we hang on to some people during like the really great times when you have, when you have historically low unemployment, Rhonda, you tend to hold on to like crappy employees because you go, wow, we just, I, I mean, even though they're crappy, they're better than not having anybody. And so we just keep the crappy people. And I think we have this kind of pause right now. We go, gosh, Tim sucks. We need to get rid of him for sure. And then the question is, is so do we, now we have this ability to kind of upgrade our talent. And for me, it's always about how do we make sure we have the best talent possible? And I think what we'll see when we take a look in hindsight after this is all kind of said and done is, the greatest organizations took this time to actually increase their talent, not decrease their talent. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to lose some people because they're going to say, Hey, we have some lower talented people that we need to get off the bus. At the same time, we're going to go out and cherry pick the greatest talent available so that when we come out on the other side of this, we're perfectly positioned to be successful. And I'm, I'm hearing that that's happening right now. Um, I heard through well, the grapevine. Yeah. I heard through the grapevine that the headhunters are are really um, really busy right now um, because talent is number one in a company being successful. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I think if you, you know any good recruiter should be pipelining really great people right now. Like that's just kind of what's going to happen. You know, what I hear on the street right now is that a lot of people, a lot of companies are 
having to go through layoffs and cuts and stuff like that just to survive. But I think as we get two weeks, three weeks, four weeks out from all of this, um, you'll start to see the next level of this, which is bad companies will continue just to try to survive by cutting. And I have a great analogy. When I was in the restaurant industry, I had a leader once tell me, you staff for the business you want, not the business you have, meaning you can staff yourself right out of business because you go, oh, well, we only have five customers today, so I'm, gonna need, I'm only going to need one person. And then, oh, we only have three customers, so now I'm going to need zero people. Unless, and saying, wait a minute, what if I want 10 customers? How many people do I need on staff to take care of those 10 customers in a really great way? Not only so that they'll come back, but they'll recommend other people come back. So there is this dynamic of you can staff yourself out of business by cutting, 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 cutting expense-wise. Or I think what really good companies will do is to say, how do we ensure that when we finally do get that customer to come see us, to come buy from us, to come use us, that they have such a great experience that not only are they going to return, but they're going to recommend other people return as well. And I think that's what we see with great companies over time when you go through crisis situations like this. Yeah, I read, a, I read an article um, and I loved it because Roosevelt said, um, a good sailor didn't become a good sailor by sailing on calm seas. And I think that there's been a lot of businesses out there, um, a lot of HR departments um, riding, riding the wave. It's been a great wave for the past 10, 10 years. Ron, I just have to say how impressed I am that you actually are reading Teddy Roosevelt articles in 2020. <laughs> Especially being a Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> so saying saying that um hr now is do, having to do a pivot and um do you want to comment on the pivot that we're seeing within the hr departments um I, yeah i mean I, I think there's going to be a lot of those that take place I, you know like anytime you know we go through a downturn or a hiccup in the economy or anything like that. And this is a global kind of issue. It's not just a U.S. issue or a North American issue by any means. This is going to hit everybody and it's going to hit some countries out uh, much harder than others. You know, I think you, again, you start to figure out really who is strategic in the HR side, who's going to help drive that next level business, who's going to help um, create you know, the situations and experiences that are going to lead us out of a dire, you know, situation. And, and you know, and I think that for when you, when you go through like a really extended long period of really good growth and, and high times or good times like we've had over the last probably 10 years, you know, there's not a lot of leaders in place that actually have been through a crisis. And, 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 and you know, most of us are lucky enough um, to have actually had that experience, whether that's the Great Recession or 9-11 or other big things that happen. Um, and I'm talking from, from an American perspective. I know other crises have happened for other countries. But um, if you never have and you've only been in, in position for the last eight or nine years, you don't really have any idea. All you've known is grow, 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 resources, resources, resources. And so now how do you react to that pivot of, circle the wagons, <laughs> you have limited resources, you just cut all of your expenses, uh, you know, and then you have to start to be able to, what you realize coming out of that is to say, wait a minute, I have to have the leadership enough to come out to my executives and go, hey, there are certain things, certain tools that we still need to be successful coming out of this, right? I still need to be able to train um, for the skills that we need and to make our people even better and stronger. If we cut that, we're cutting off, you know, our nose and part, you know, in front of our face or whatever the saying is. But we saw that in like 2007 to 2008, nine stuff like that, where companies would they cut so deep and so bad, at, you know, within HR and within training and all these other aspects that they weren't prepared to come out. And many of those companies lost their businesses. And then you had companies that said, "Hey, we're going to do a lot of things, but we're not going to cut certain things because we know that's the livelihood for what we do." And we're going to make sure we continue to enable those tools. Yeah. And you know, Tim, for years we have heard HR wants a seat at the corporate table. Well, now in, in this scenario that's existing in today's society, HR is the quarterback. And it's, this is where the champions are going to be made. 
Um, and I just can't stress that enough that um, there has to be a lot of empathy for the for it. And I think you did a blog recently on now's the time for kindness. Um, because we're, we've thrown our employees into an environment that, although it's home, they're not comfortable with. Yeah. I, I mean, really, we have to have, have a much higher level of empathy and understanding than we have because, you know, everybody, you know, you think like, oh, you're going to go work from home and it's going to be so wonderful and great. Um, but it's not. There's a lot. There's a high percentage of employees that don't want to work from home. They enjoy coming into the office and having that team and that camaraderie and that support with other individuals and working from home from them and being isolated is a nightmare or working from home and having to take care of your children and doing all that stuff is a nightmare. It's not actually helpful and it's going to hurt their performance. And we have to understand that during we, what we hope is a once in a lifetime pandemic kind of crisis that we, we, our level of understanding increases and doesn't decrease. And I think that's always been a knock on HR, right? Is that, you know, we were, we're the people people, but we tend not to understand or we tend to be hard on certain things or whatever. Um, I thought it was interesting when we talk about that seat at the table or, or essential versus not essential employees the governor of the state that I live in in Michigan put out this big proclamation of uh, shelter in place. Like a lot of individuals across the world have been told like, Hey, you got to kind of work from home or whatever that might be. And they had a specific call out to HR professionals that they could actually go to work because it's critical that people get their paychecks. It's critical that they get and have, have access to the benefits that they need from a medical perspective and things of that sort. And so in a time of, probably the biggest crisis we'll see in our lifetime, HR definitely has a role to play. Now, right now, you know, that role is fairly transactional, but I think what we have to be able to do from an HR leader perspective is step into the void within our organizations. As everybody else is doing crisis management, we have to understand where are things getting dropped and then we need to be able to come in and pick those up and show people, hey, here's, here's exactly what we're doing to keep, you know, everything in perspective from a long-term, you know, kind of view. That's right. And, and Tim, what's interesting, uh, um, and, and I just saw it on, on a LinkedIn, LinkedIn document, that now HR is having to do training, and it's on basics that you and I take for granted. We've really had to, as HR, step back and look at the talents of the people that work for us, like time management, establishing priorities. Um, Everybody went home and overnight they had to learn how to do Zoom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Zoom, uh, Slack, Microsoft Teams, like all of these kind of communication tools that, you know, remote workers have probably been using for years. But when you start to combine the low percentage of remote workers out there with all of these kind of in-office workers that now are working remotely and trying to figure out how to communicate with each other, um, it's, it's a pretty you know, I think we'll, at the end of all of this, or on the, on the other side of all of this, we'll see um, a much different kind of workforce um, enablement than we have right now. Um, and, and that's not a bad thing. I think that'll be a good thing. I think it's shown a lot of, I think, um, um, you know, baby boomer, Gen X leaders that, hey, it's okay to actually have people work remotely and get things done. Um, and then you're also going to have some people that you go, yeah, guess what? you know, Tim can't work remote. He just doesn't have that capability. <laughs> he's not self-directed enough or he's not whatever. Or if we have him work remotely, we better be really, really good on measuring certain things to and know, understand what, what does success look like in that job that's measurable so that when we have them work remotely, we can still measure that job in a way that makes sense. Oh, exactly. And, you know, Tim, one of the things that I like to keep in mind is, is the opportunity that working from home is providing. No longer are you doing that hour commute to and from the office. So it's a chance for training to occur. Um, and I truly believe that, um, that there's a, a surge of training going on and it's self-initiated by the employee working at home because they want to bring better talents to their employer when this is all over with. It's definitely pushing the envelope 
um, of training, you know, again, you know, Ronnie, we've been around the technology of training for the last decade or more in terms of seeing the evolution of how it's worked. And I think we continue to see like these micro learning platforms that are, you know, SaaS enabled so that you can do them anywhere. But yet still a lot of companies would do traditional training in a classroom with 40 people, employees, and here's what we're going to do. And, and I think this is forcing us to really finally take advantage of all those great kind of technologies out there that have been developed over the years and really see what it looks like at scale. Um, and so I, I'm pretty excited about that. It's another one of those, like the technology has said for the longest time, hey, we can do this. But yet our workforce wasn't in that position to really take advantage of it. And now they are. Exactly. Well, Tim, it's been most enjoyable. We could talk about this all day because you and I have been around for a while. <laughs> and, and we know the space so well. But I want to thank you. Do you um, but, you know, we're in the talent space. Um, we really are into um, making the employee enjoy their job and enjoy what they do. We want to ask you, what do you enjoy about your job? Um, you know, I think it's the, seeing the growth of, of the people that I, that I work with. Um, seeing, I mean, not just in professional sense, but I think in a personal sense, you know, we spend so much time with those, you know, coworkers that we get to see them go through all, all the life aspects of, you know, graduating college and getting married and having kids and sometimes having kids and then getting married or whatever, like no judgment, like it happens different ways for everybody. But I think seeing the, the growth uh, of them from, you know, all those aspects of life for me, I think is pretty phenomenal. And then to also see, like I have a couple of individuals working for me that we hired like literally right out of college. They've been with us like a, de a decade and now they have people working for them. They're in leadership capacities and going through this crisis and seeing how they now interact with their teams versus when I hired them, when we were going through the recession and I had to interact with them, like you get those proud moments of saying, Hey, we we're they're, they're getting it right. They're doing the right stuff. They're, the future is going to be okay with these individuals. Um, I think it's pretty phenomenal to see that kind of thing. And it, it makes me energized for what's next, you know, after all this, you know, kind of gets, gets on the backside of this pandemic. Yeah. Tim, you know, you're, you're, you're walking proof of what the talent experience is all about. And I want to thank you for being a guest on Talent X. And I would like to say, hope to see you on the ex exhibition floor, but I don't know when we're going to be back there. Any we'll, guess? We'll be back there. I think the fall, we'll, we'll see some semblance of some of that. Now, I mean, that's, again, that's maybe wishful thinking, but I, I hope that we'll be back there. I know for sure 2021, um, we'll, we'll be back for sure. So we'll see you then. Okay. Take care. Bye. Take all. care. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Talent X podcast. For more talent experience and future of work conversations, visit talentxpodcast.com. Follow us on Twitter at Talent X Podcast. Or join the conversation with hashtag Talent X Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or Twitter. Talent X, the talent experience podcast, was brought to you by the fabulous Fuelies at Fuel 50.